Hello everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Amber and I will be your instructor tonight. So my friend Amanda Webb, who is also a teacher here in Mountain Home, messaged me yesterday and said, hey, I had a dream about you and you were teaching a paint class on social media um, for a tiger head. Now, if I didn't know her, I would find that a little strange that she's dreaming about me painting. Um, however, I was extremely flattered because it means she's thinking about art and um, appreciates how much it helps our kids out during this time, um, getting their minds creative and thinking in different ways. Um, it allows them to be active and not just sit in front of the TV while we're in quarantine. So I appreciate that she reached out to me. So what we're going to do is either paint a tiger head or you can um, download and print this tiger coloring sheet that's available on my Facebook page. This one, one of my kiddos colored with oil pastels. Um, we will also have the coloring sheets available for free at the elementary schools here in town, Northwest and East, um, the Hacker Middle School and Junior High. So if you wanna pick up a free coloring sheet, if you don't have access to print on your own, you can do so for free um, starting tomorrow through the whole week. Or if you have paints at home and you'd like to paint, you can pick up a free canvas from me and these will be available starting Friday. I will put more information on my Facebook page as to when and where, um, but you can see it's outlined for you and it's kind of like a paint by number. So if you look closely, there's little bees in all the areas of where you paint black. And then I'm gonna show you, of course, where to place orange and white too. So you can paint or you can do a coloring sheet and you can use oil pastels, crayons, markers, color pencils, whatever you have at home. So the whole point of this is to paint or color your tiger and then display it in your front window. And we're trying to portray the whole message across our community of one town, one team, that we're all in this together. And by supporting one, one another and showing the love for each other, we can make it through anything. So that's the Mountain Home motto, one town, one team, and tigers are our mascots. So that is why we're painting tigers tonight. To get started, you'll need your canvas, um, a couple brushes. I have a small detailed brush and then a medium sized brush. You'll need a water cup to wash your brushes out. I just use a yogurt cup, but you can use whatever you have at home. Um, a plate for your paint, napkin to wash your brushes out. And then um, since we're painting a tiger, very basic with colors. You just need orange, white, and black. And then just a little bit of yellow I'm gonna use for the eyes. Um, I use this acrylic paint called Cheap. However, you can use any type of acrylic paint that you have. Um, Walmart does have some available. I think I've even seen it at the dollar store too. So it doesn't have to be fancy, whatever you have at home. Now I always encourage the kids that paint with me to be creative and unique and to display their personality through their painting. So even though we're painting a tiger and tigers are orange, black, and white, if your kiddos feel like painting a very festive tiger and showing their creativity, they can paint it pink, they can paint it purple, they can make it a rainbow tiger, whatever they're feeling. Encourage them to make it their own so they don't have to paint it realistic. I will show you how I'm going to paint my tiger and then of course you can tweak it for whatever colors you want to use. So first off, we are going to use our orange paint. And again, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, it doesn't take a lot of paint. A little bit of paint goes a long ways. And what you're going to do is dip your brush in some water and add just a couple drops of water to your paint. This is gonna help thin the consistency and make your paint last longer. But more importantly, it's gonna help uh, your brush smooth across your canvas a lot nicer. You won't have any jagged, white spots left behind, it'll be a nice fluid motion. So we're starting with our orange. And like I showed you here, your tiger is outlined in um, kind of a paint by number style. So everywhere where you see bees, those are all gonna be painted with black. So we're gonna start by painting everything that doesn't have a letter with orange. And we're just gonna paint it all orange. We're not gonna worry about our white right now or where white needs to be placed later on. We are just gonna paint the whole thing orange around all of our B black areas. Now you wanna stay within your lines as best as you can. Once we don't 
um, waste any paint, but also so it's less to cover up. Luckily, since we're painting with black, if you have mistakes outside the lines, black is going to cover up any type of mistake you have. So that is also why I wrote all those B's on there because when you paint black over it, you're not going to see them. If we were painting white over those letters, you'd have to do a couple coats because white is obviously lighter in color. Same with orange. If I had wrote O's on all the areas where you needed to paint orange, you'd have to do a couple coats to, to hide them. So the B's are only in the black area, and then you can follow along of where to put your orange and your white. So you can see here, I'm getting my orange on there. And sorry, the lighting isn't the best. It's kind of gloomy outside. Can you all believe that earthquake we just had? It was crazy. All right. I really enjoy painting. Um, it's a way for me to unwind and kind of let go of some stress from the day. I know a lot of y'all are working from home now. Um, our kiddos are back in school, homeschooled actually. Uh, so we are their teachers at the moment and it can be a lot to manage. So being able to just end the day with some painting, maybe a nice glass of wine, bubble bath afterwards, whatever. It's nice to just relax and unwind and let your mind kind of drift away from the everyday things we have to think about. When I'm painting, I just get lost in the painting and I don't worry about anything else. So it's a great way to let go of some stress. So we are going to paint all of those areas that do not have a B in orange. And then once I finish painting all those areas, I'll come back and I'll show you what else to paint. All right, everyone. So now that you have finished all the orange in your tiger, and don't forget this little part right here because I almost did as well. Uh, this is what it should look like with all the orange. One thing I failed to mention was um, if you don't like the orange straight from the tube, you can always add some white to it to make it a lighter shade. Or if you wanna make it a little darker, um, add just a touch of red to give it a darker hue. Don't add black because it'll make it muddy looking and um, too dark. So we have the orange done. Uh, the next little part I'm gonna do real fast is the yellow in the eyes. Um, you can use whatever color you want for the eyes. It doesn't have to be yellow, but um, yellow complements the orange and black really nicely and kind of makes the eyes look like they're glowing. So for the yellow part of the eyes, you're only gonna paint that little spot that kind of looks like a moon crescent shape. Let me show you right here. So just those two spots right there on the eyes. Kind of looks like it's glowing already. So the next step we're going to do, um, always make sure too that you're cleaning your brushes out really well. You don't want to leave any paint in them because it'll ruin the bristles. The next part we're going to do is add um, a few touches of white. So tigers usually have white, orange, and black fur in their face or on their whole body. Um, if you want to leave it just like this and fill in the black, you most certainly can. Um, with the coloring sheets, that's what my kiddos did. They just colored orange. But if you want to give it a little bit more dimension and color of the face, then we can add some white. Um, just a small squirt of white on your plate. And you're going to add, again, some water to help thin out that consistency of your paint. Not too much. You don't want to make it look like watercolors when you start painting. Just enough to help with a nice fluid motion. So typically, on a tiger face, they have white around their eyes, um, on their chin, kind of around their nose. So we're just going to give it the effect of a tiger face to make it look more dimensional, maybe a little furry, just depending on what kind of look you're going for. So I'm going to snag some white on my brush. I'm using my medium sized brush still. And I'm going to paint some white right against the, right against the line here of where the orange and the black would meet. And with this, you might have to do a couple coats depending on how contrasting you want because you're painting over a darker color 
over that orange, so you'll be able to see some of the orange through it still. It's kind of hard to tell since you're painting red against white, so let me add some black right there for you real quick so that way you can see the full effect of how it will look. How you get a better idea of whether or not you like it. So I'm gonna add black on this eye where there's a B. And then you can see how the white looks. Now remember that you have a small fine tip brush that you'll want to use as you get into some of these small detailed areas so that way you don't have too thick of a line. Otherwise your areas could start looking a little fatter or chunkier than what they need to be. Especially as you get into the stripes of those tigers, you don't want to make them too thick and they end up blending together. You want to make sure you keep the separation of his stripes or her stripes, whatever kind of tiger you're painting. So let me just get this stripe on real fast for you. And then I can show you what I'm talking about with the extra white around the eyes. All right, so this part is going to take a little bit longer too for you, the black, just because you're gonna fine tune all of those lines to make sure they're clean and crisp, that you don't have any pencil lines showing. And that way you have nice sharp lines between each of your colors to really show those tiger stripes and bold characteristics that a tiger has. Okay, so I'll clean that up in a minute. But you can see here, with the white line against the black on top of the orange, kind of just gives a little bit more dimension to your tiger face. Again, you can do this step, or you don't have to, whatever you're comfortable with. And now that it's had a little bit of time to dry as I was painting the black, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add another coat of white over top of it so that way it's more contrasting and you don't see as much of that orange color underneath. Make sure as you're doing this step, like if you just painted your black, you make sure it's really dry along the edges of where your white and your black would meet up. Otherwise, if it's not dry yet, your two colors will bleed together and it'll look gray and, and ugly looking. You don't wanna blend those together on your tiger. So a little bit easier to see right there. So for the white, I'm gonna do it on the other side so that way it is balanced and symmetrical. So along the side of the eye, the top of the eye, you can make this as thin or as thick as you want. And I'm just doing nice solid um, shapes Kind of following the curvature of his eyes. If you want to make it wispy and feathery like so it looks hairy, you definitely can do that as well. Whatever your style is. I'm also going to add some white around his nose. Tigers usually have white around that area as well. Again, a little hard to see just because we haven't painted this black yet but there's white right here right around the shape of that nose and then I added the white around the shape of this eye as well the last spot I'm gonna add it for now is just along his chin area down here in this orange part of the chin. So there's just a couple white streaks right there in his chin. So that's all I'm gonna add right now just to show you what adding a little bit of white will do. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and fill in all of those black areas, all of those areas that have a B that you didn't paint in orange. And then after we're done with the black, we can take a look at it and see if we wanna add any more white. So go ahead and paint all those areas with a B with your black color, and then we will take a look and see what else to do afterwards.
All right, everyone, you made it through the black, which I know is super tedious. So here's our tiger face with all of the black, and you can really see those whites now. It's a lot more contrasting. If you want to complete the black first and then add the white touches afterwards, you can if it's easier for you to see where you're painting it. Um, the one thing I really want to stress is that you make sure your black paint is completely dry before you go in and start adding those whites because otherwise the two will blend together and they'll just look dirty and kind of milky and ugly. So I have white here around my eyes, my nose, and my chin here. Um, if you want to add a few more touches just along the sides here, you're more than welcome to. It just helps brighten the, the face up and breaks up that color so it doesn't look so orange and black. Again, just follow your lines. And I'll show you here what it looks like. Just makes the face not look or appear as dark. So it's a great way to brighten it up a little bit. You don't have to do the entire side you can just add a few, a few white strokes here and there. Let's see here, add one more right there. So see how that just brightens it up a bit more? You can add a little bit in the top of the head. This really is your preference on how much you want to add. I kind of like it to look a little bit brighter, so I'm going to add just a few more. You can kind of think of these as highlights. All right, so there we go. Just a few brush strokes of white to brighten up the face, and they're just following the shape of those black lines. The last thing you need to do is your text here in the bottom. You can paint this with a paintbrush and paint if you would like, um, or you can use a Sharpie, or if you have a paint pen around, you can use that as well. You can just outline them, you can color them in, you can add a few extra lines for details, whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple. Um, I kind of did it so they weren't a solid black. I don't know if you can really see that, but it's more of a playful look, kind of rugged. And then if you wanna paint your background, you can. I'm gonna leave mine white, so that way my tiger face is very bold and stands out. So totally up to you. That's your tiger face. One thing I really wanna stress is this painting, um, there is quite a few details and a lot of small details. They're not hard, uh, they are a little tedious, they take a bit of time but your littler kids probably would have a hard time with it. Um, I would say this is more geared towards kids at least eight or nine and older. So this is a great activity for your younger kids, um, middle school, junior high, high school, and then of course yourself. Or if you want to cha challenge your littler ones, um, they could paint part of it and then you could paint the rest of it. Maybe you have them do the orange and then you go in and do the black details that are more fine and minute. Totally up to you, but just want to preference that it is a little more um, challenging for the younger kids so once you have finished your tiger head go ahead and display it in your window so that way um, those driving around can see you have your tiger pride and are supporting our community again if you want a free canvas um, be on the lookout on my Facebook page for when and where to pick those up um, they will be first come first serve and a limited number per family so that way we can share the love with everyone um, you can just print off your coloring sheet um, the coloring sheet is on my facebook page or you can pick up a free coloring sheet if you don't have access to a printer at north elementary east elementary west elementary hacker middle school or the junior high so lots of different options so that way everybody in our community can partake and have fun with this activity if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, thank you, Amanda Webb, for the great suggestion. I hope you all have fun with it. And feel free to share your photos of your finished tigers up in your windows so that way everyone can see your beautiful artwork. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Bye.